from my end. Um, okay, yeah. So um, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Um, today, what we're going to be going over is um, setting up Redash, um, um, going along all of the process of um, how uh, we can get started with Redash, um, build our first dashboard using it. Um, and also while we go along, try and debug any of the problems that you might face. Um, some of you might have already set up Redash, uh, which is great. Um, so definitely let's make this uh, an active and uh, quite a long session. Okay, so let me share my screen. So um, if you go to vdash.io, um, yeah, from the homepage, you can see um, the main user of vdash, right? It, it helps you make sense of your data. Um, just looking at numbers um, is not really relevant enough to make any significant business decisions, right? And so what vdash allows you to do is it allows you to connect and create um, various data sources and to build dashboards and visualize them um, and share them uh, with various team members, um, any stakeholders and any members of your company, right? Um, okay, so we're going to be going over the setup process of Redash. Is that a question? Um, yeah, yes, but um, Yeah, so we're going to be um, going over the setup process let me share this link um by now everyone should have ha should have um, a properly working installation of docker and docker compose um and the setup we're going to follow is going to use uh docker right so yeah the basic deployments you have the specifications that are required for redash to function properly for gigabytes of ram and reasonable amount of cpu allocation um yeah so assuming that that is the case let's go over the docker setup right um so when you go there you can see that there is this docker compose configuration um which is the docker compose the yaml file which allows you to set up and get started with redash right so let's create a new an empty a fresh directory and start off through the entire process. Um, so let's make a new directory called redash. Um, and let's go into that and let's use VS Code to actually open it, right? So what we want to do is we want to bring this Docker Compose the YAML file into our local instance. So let's create this Docker Compose the YAML and let's paste this Compose file. So let's have a quick overview of the things that um, are actually going on here and. Um, understand some of the basic concepts, right? Um, okay, and understand some of the basic concepts. So this is just telling us that um, it's using the Redash image, the image that Redash themselves provide. Um, and we can see that it has an environment file. Um, so this M file is going to store various environment variables that we're going to actually need, like um, this environment variables might be uh, specific cookie configuration, specific passwords, and we'll go over that. And so um, what it assumes is that inside of your opt slash redash directory, there will be this M file, uh, which you're going to use, right? But so that we can see everything and so that everything is actually over um, on this directory, let's actually change this to have a redash.m file where we will store um, our environment variables, right? So let's create a redash.end file. And here we will be storing um, any essential 
environment variables that um, redash service will be will be needing, right? Um, okay. So other places where um, this end file actually exists, um, not only a single container, um, a single service or a single container is not relying on it. Um, so as you can see, this Postgres container is also relying um, on this um, environment file to actually exist on that directory. So let's also change that. Um, and over also on the volume section, you can see that um, it wants to mount the volume that our Postgres database, which Redash is going to use to store any metadata and other factors, is actually going to rely inside of that directory. But we actually, we also want to see this uh, Postgres data directory. So let's also change this to be inside of here. So let's create a new Postgres data folder. And so what it what it will do is it will mount this local directory um within our docker container right and so there will be this one-on-one -on -one mapping between uh between our folder and the one uh which is inside of the container um yeah so with with that basic just high level overview um we know like how to build our Docker images, right? Uh, how to build and run our Docker images just using um, using a basic uh, Docker command, Docker compose up, right? And that is supposed to run our folder. So we have this modified small things. We have the basic compose.yaml file. And so just doing the Docker compose up should be able to get us up and running, right? And let's specify which file it is. And let's put on command. Okay. So we have an error, right? What it is saying is that the port is not available. So which port is not available? Like, let's go over the debugging process that we would actually also go to um, when dealing with instances, with Docker instances. Um, it is really it's exactly the same as you debug any uh, software application that you're writing but let's go over this together um, so that everyone sets it up properly um yeah so it had it, it could not actually expose the port um 80 right the port 80 of our local instance and so let's try and look at which service was actually trying to use port 80 and we can see that it was the nginx image right so the nginx image is trying to map over our local instances port 80 and our machine is not allowing it um, and so let's change this number to an available port that we can actually utilize um, and so let me pick a random port of 3500 uh, because that port is um, above the range of the properly allocated the instance allocated ports right so this port is a free port and so we should not be getting this error when we when we do this right and so with this information we're also seeing that another error database is uninitialized um, and super super user password is not actually um uh, where was it yeah so our database is not initialized, right? So this this is the key error that we take away from this. Um, and so what it is saying is that this Postgres database that you have over here, um, this service inside of our Docker Compose, um, one of the containers is actually not, not initialized yet. Um, and Right now, actually, we can see we have not even specified any specific configurations for um, for this redash.env file that we actually talked about, right? Um, and so, if we go to if we go to this file and read this high level overview that we have, it specifies that there are specific environment variables that we need to set, such as redash secret key. And here, the Google Client ID, Redash also has a hosted service. You don't have to go through this manual cumbersome process of setting it up. Uh, but in our case, that is not necessary. So you can find all of the environment variables that we're going to use 
uh, that you can possibly use over on this link that I've just shared. Um, yeah, but let's go over uh, some of the environment variables that you would normally set, right? Uh, so one of the things um, going into this, uh, one of the requirements to actually set is the redash redis URL, right? So what the redash redis URL does is um, the URL redash services will use to read and write to Redis. Um, you can you can read more about Redis. It is used as um, a caching mechanism, and underneath it, Redash really utilizes Redis. Um, and so we would have to set the URL on which uh, Redash can actually access Redis, right? And so let's have this Redash Redis URL, and um, Redis is available at um, Redis. Um, and it is it's it's before it's before license to um, at port sixty three seventy nine, right? And so you'd have to specify this redash redis URL. Um, and another thing that you you'd have to set is um, the redash cookie secret, which was actually specified over on the over on the initial docker getting started page, right? So you can see that this is required and it is used for various script of graphic features of the web server. Um, and you can read more about how Redash actually utilizes the key over the link that is provided, right? So let's go on to set the Redash cookie secret. Uh, and so the Redash cookie secret can actually uh, be anything, um, any string, I believe, but let's set it to redash self-hosted because we're actually um, we're actually hosting it um, ourselves. Um, and the next thing that we want to do, so we'll say that redash connects entries to your data source, right? Um, and so our data source in our case is going to be a database. We're going to be utilizing the same Postgres database that. Um, that the Docker Compose actually ships with. Um, so let's search the database URL, right? So it is the URL of the Redash server and worker services will use to access the metadata database. So let's set that over here. Um, and what we are going to actually do is we're going to be uh, using the same uh, the same configuration that we use when we create an SQL Alchemy engine, right? Uh, so when we create an SQL Alchemy engine, uh, we have a specific con configuration where we have the specific database management system. Um, in our case, it is going to be uh, PostgreSQL. Um, and after that, there is going to be like the format is we're going to have a username. Uh, we're going to have a password. Is that a question mark? So we're going to have a username, which is mapped to a password. And then we're going to have um, a specific host name. Um, and then we're going to have a database name, right? And this is going to be the configuration that we are going to use. Um, and so um, in our case, let's just create a user named Postgres. Um, and our and our host name because um, over on the container we specified the service as Postgres itself. Let we can specify this um, as Postgres. And again, I'm going to be complicating the database name. So I think let's let's leave this DB name as uh, DB name. Um, or I believe that might cause any other problem. So let's also maybe set this as Postgres. Or we can come, we can come back to this if uh, this causes any issues, right? So yeah, just PostgreSQL uh, and an SQL Alchemy based um, URL connection to the database that we are going to provide, right? Um, yeah. So what what this has said is yes, success. Yeah, it's like your it's like. The format that you are using is different from the one you said. You said that we should put the username, the password, uh, the host name, and the DB name. But here we just have, okay, sure. 
Yeah, so this would be the password. Um, I'm actually planning, since this is just uh, a demo, I'm going to use this. So you can see that I can use, uh, I can use this configuration to allow me to connect without a password. Um, so I'm just bypassing that step. So this is just the username that is specified. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so this, let's start off with this basic configuration and we can see that we can set this, this Postgres password is also um, actually a required uh, environment variable, right? So Postgres password, and we can simply just set that to an empty string. Uh, because we're going to actually bypass it. Um, and so what this is actually saying is, yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm sorry to, to make you get back, but uh, I don't understand. Uh, Redash database. Can... Um, can you speak a bit louder, ma'am? Um, I'm, ha I'm having difficulty hearing you. Okay. Uh, yeah, yes, so yes. I don't know if I can hear Mohammed. Okay, uh, my question is, I thought that we'll be using the, the previous database that we have created. So I thought that we, have, we had to make a connection between Redash and that database. So uh, it's like we are creating another database, so I don't understand. Um, so you have your Postgres database, right? So what the, the data that I'm going to be loading is going to be similar to, where is it? Uh, this Postgres database, right? So we're not using Redis as a data store. Redash is using it underneath. Um, but we, we can use another service. So what you would normally do um, is you would probably decouple this, um, this services and you might have um, a database elsewhere, right? Um, and then you'd have to go in uh, and modify specific, uh, specific instances of this Docker image uh, to actually configure it to use that database. Um, and so we're, we're going to be connecting to this Postgres database. Can you hear uh, okay. me? Uh, yes, I, I can hear you now. Uh, so can you get back to the code? Yes. Um, what I said that uh, redash URL, redash re database URL. Yes. So uh, do th that link, do we create it uh, instantly uh, with any random uh, names and random strings or we just have to to pre-modify the database before we we we're going to paste that url specifically um so uh like i'm not completely sure of the question but uh like the i believe the postgres database already when it when th there is another process that we're going to have to go to um, and so you'll see that um, Redash actually, um, there is an initialization step, like this area database is uninitialized uh, with a super user. So the Redash uh, container itself actually has another process that it has to go through to initialize all of these processes. And so we'll, we'll see that as we go on. Okay, okay, thank you. No problem. Uh, yeah, so we can we can start off with this. Um, and let's reboot our instance and we're going to see that we still face errors, right? Um, where was it? Yeah, so it is this error. So we don't want to use a password on our case. And so what it is telling us is uh, to use this host authentication method to trust. Uh, so allowing us to actually access um, the Postgres database without any password, right? Uh, yeah, so how we would do that is, um, yeah. 
how we would do that is we would set an environment variable over on Postgres. Uh, so let's create an environment variable which requires uh, a name value pair, which we're going to use this. Uh, yeah, if, if that's the question, you can go on. Uh, what if we uh, put the environment variable we just uh, wrote in the redash.emv in this environment? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We can we can here, all of them. It does, it does not matter. Okay. That, should, that should be the case. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we have a we have a trust authorized database now um, due to this configuration, right? Um, yeah. And so it is booting our workers. We have specific workers that are specified in the Docker Compose YAML file. Um, and so our Nginx server is running on, uh, is exposed on port 3500. And so um, a basic instinct would be if we go to local host and go to uh, port mapping 3500, we should be able to log into, we should be able to log into our redash URL, right? Um, yeah, but the the biggest question was is like, yeah, fatal database DB name does not exist. Uh, yeah, and so now this error, the database DB name is not existing. And so I think um, the Postgres container that we have actually ships with uh, a pre-configured Postgres database. And so let's change this configuration and um, our container and so that was why i did not want to have the the similar names but i think this 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 will still do um, yeah and so it is starting Starting. I'm not completely sure if we can get access, but yeah. So when we still run it, we still see the same things, right? Um, but now it's not that the database no longer exists, right? Um, we were trying to create a connection to a database that, that, that did not exist um, for the same question that uh, Muhammad had. Right. So, but we have an existing Postgres database over on the image that was provided, uh, and so we have this, we have this Postgres database. But we see that the, there is, um, it is saying that specific relations um, do not actually exist. And so let it, let's, um, yeah. If we have just a quick over overview of the logs, um, we can see the. We can see that this is the significant part of the error logs, right? So let's just Google that and state over like redash programming error relation creates does not exist. And they have this really good discussion forum which allows you to really see um, various issues people are actually facing, right? Um, and so this over, okay, so this, what what actually fixed this issue? Um, yeah, this, I'm not completely sure of what fixed this. This was not the discussion that, okay, relation organizations does not exist. Have you confirmed we dash database is running properly? Yeah, and so from what you can see is, it can be caused by uh, multiple issues, right? Um, and if we go to the Stack Overflow one, I think, um, yeah. So if we go to the Stack Overflow one, there there was one over the discussion forum which actually actually which actually um, solved this similar issue. But this is caused because the specific relations, um, the specific schemas that um, Redash actually creates um, to handle the various organizations that are going to happen, the various users that are going to log in. Um, there needs to be a previous initialization step uh, before Docker Compose up. So all of the services are just booting up and uh, over on that database, over on that Postgres database, none of the schemas are actually being created, right? And so the 
command that you'd have to run is you'd have to run this um, server create db command, which actually handles all of the installation processes, right? So let's make sure uh, to stop all of our services. And let's let's run this command, right? Uh, so let's specify the file, and we want the create db command, which creates all of the databases and the schema configurations um, that Redash is going to use. Right, okay, so what it has done is it has now created um, this specific configuration. And even with a, the simple look at Stack Overflow, we can see, even though this isn't that voted yet, this has created um, our database. And so if we do the Docker Compose up command now again, we should not be facing that similar error where um, specific organizations couldn't be found um, and and we should be able to log into our uh, Redash admin page, right? Um, yeah, and so we now have, um, since this is just an initial user, this is taking us to the Redash um, initial setup process where we would get to specify our name, email address, and get started with Redash, right? So um, let me use other an academy.org. Um, yeah, and so let's create a password, password, um, organization name, 10 Academy. And so, and so with that, we now have our Redash installation set up and we are ready to go, right? Um, um, yes, no, Mokisa. Have a, a question related to directories. Uh, we are using Redash, and Redash has a, a, a Docker Compose uh, document. I mean, the Yam. Even yeah. in uh, the AIA Pro has its uh, uh, Docker Compose. We not yes. complete if we have it on the same GitHub repo. Um. So you'd have you'd have to, uh, making them over on different directories would be the best approach. Um, having them over on the same repository is not a problem, but um, you can't have two files, yeah, like you can't have two files over on the same directory. Um, and so like, even on the network configuration, when I specifically run them, I'm specifying the specific Docker Compose file, right? Mm -hmm. So you could have them on each of, on their own directories. Um, but creating a new repo is, is not necessary. Okay. Okay. Can, can you hear me? Um, yes, yes, I can hear you. So um, what if I want, I want that uh, no two Docker Compose to be run in the, in the same time, like Airflow and Redash at the same time? Because that will slow down my uh, laptop so hard. Um, yeah, of course. Um, so like this separation of those two Docker Compose um, and Airflow will really give you that microservice architecture. And um, even Airflow can grow so huge that it might crash your instance um, or Redash might also crash your instance if your instance is small. So having those two run separately um, is really good. So if Airflow is maybe triggering some change over on your database, uh, you might take Redash down, but if any of the transformations are already done by DBT, um, Redash, you can use it for um, any real-time analysis or um, you can use it to visualize a data in your, um, in your data store that is, that is being handled separately from Airflow, right? And so you, using that approach, you could, um, you, could go, you could go through that, right? Um, okay, so we now have that setup done. Uh, let's 
identify and go over a use case. Uh, and so I'm gonna go over to Yahoo Finance to download some stock data that we can use to maybe build our dashboard, right? Uh, and so let's uh, use Netflix. Um, and so let, Yahoo Finance is a really great place for anyone that is interested in um, financial analysis. And so let's just get the historical data so that we can go over the historical analysis, right? Um, and so we have downloaded this uh, historical data of Netflix, right? And um, let's go over to downloads. Let me pull it over. Uh, yeah. Let me bring it over here so that we can have a better look at it. Right, so this is the Netflix CSV data that Yahoo Finance gives us. We have an opening high, um, low closing data, adjusted close and the volume uh, that has been treated. I'm not sure over what exchange it is. Um, so over, over the NASDAQ. So the Netflix stock data is trading over on the NASDAQ exchange and it has given us this data, right? Um, okay, so let's load this data into, uh, let's load this data into the specific, um, into that Postgres database that we talked about, right? Um, one moment. Yeah, so let's create a load to database.py. For our, for our use case, since this is a small use case, we're just going to be using uh, Pandas and SQL Alchemy to load the data uh, into the database, right? And so let's create a virtual environment, which we're going to use to actually install the packages and uh, encapsulate our project. So we have uh, our virtual environment created. Um, let's activate it and let's um, install pandas. Um, and we're going to import pandas as could be. And um, yeah, uh, from SQL Alchemy, um, we're going to be importing the create engine module. Uh, Let's install. Well, I think, right, and so let's load in our data frame, which is uh, going to be the NFLX, the Netflix data set, which is the NFLX dot CSV data, um, and we're going to use the index column of date. Um, yeah, and I think let's set parse dates to two to actually parse the dates, right? Um, yeah, and we're going to be going over the similar process that we actually used when we um, when we set up our um, V dash configuration, right? Um, yeah, so we're going to create an engine. Um, and in that engine, we're going to be connecting to a PostgreSQL uh, database. Um, just one moment, I feel like my charger is going to... And yeah, so uh, we're going to be connecting to a, Postgres, a PostgreSQL database. Um, and that database is going to have a user of Postgres. Um, and it is going to, we want to connect locally to it, right? So 127.0.0.1. Um, and over which port uh, was it running? Okay, so we have not actually specified what port our Postgres was actually, our Postgres database was exposed to, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
And so this configuration, let's say um, 5432, which is the which is the proper, which is the default configuration of um, SQL Alchemy well, of Postgres. Um, and we're going to connect to this Postgres database, right? Um, yeah. And so who can tell me what, what is actually wrong with this specific configuration? Okay, yeah, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to connect locally here, right? Um, and over onto the port 5432. Um, but the, the Postgres database that we actually want to connect to. Yes, Anton. Maybe we have to do port forwarding in order to get access to the Postgres database. Um, yes, yeah, definitely. Um, and um, also, while we're at it, let's specify the specific point that um, we'd like to forward, right? So from our Docker container onto the local host. So uh, we'd have ports and just have a similar mapping. Um, so for just the default case, we can have 5432 forwarded to 5432, right? So let's take down this container and uh, let's just run it up so it can actually forward it. Um, yeah, but this is not going to work because if I have not shut it down, I have a Postgres, yeah. So we get the similar error that we had when we wanted to forward um, this engine export, right? And that is because I also have another Postgres uh, server that is running locally, which is actually occupying this 5432 port. So this Postgres instances for port that I'm trying to forward here um, isn't actually going to work. So we're going to have to change this to 5433 um, so that uh, we can be mapping it to another port, right? And so in this case, our port that is going to be, uh, that is going to actually be, uh, that, is, that is actually going to be working locally is going to be now at port 5433, right? Uh, and so let's again put it with the Docker Compose app and, um, Yeah, and so there is nothing wrong with that configuration. And if we go now again to the localhost 3500 port, uh, we can see that our redash instance is properly working. And so the change that we've made to, to this Docker Compose file um, didn't actually make, uh, didn't actually have any breaking changes, right? Um, yeah, and so let's, try and see what if this engine creation for the database connection has actually been successful uh, yeah so so yeah what we're trying to do um before we see the engine creation here, let's just print the head of our data frame to see um, if our initial parsing process actually uh, took place properly, right? So let's have a lot to db.py. Yeah, we can see that our data frame was actually loaded successfully. Um, and so we can go over here and see if the engine creation was actually successful. Uh, yeah, but we can see that the engine creation has failed. Um, we're not actually able to to connect with to connect to this um, this to connect to this Postgres database um, at this local port, right? Um, and that is because um, no, that is because we have not set this sort of bridge between. 
um, this port and the the one running in Docker and the one actually that we that we're trying to connect to, right? Um, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. One moment. Um, okay, sorry about that. I'm I'm facing um, connection difficulties. Uh, I have to change. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah. So this engine creation um, is actually failing, um, right? And we are not being able. We're not actually able to connect um, this Python script that is uh, running over on our local instance using uh, this local host because. Um, that Docker conf configuration is actually uh, wrapped on its own, right? So let's, uh, so that parameter, I believe is extra host. So um, adding extra hosts uh, in Docker Compose. So yeah, so in our Docker Compose configuration, uh, what it would do, what this extra host is going to, actually map the the docker's internal configuration and allow us to actually connect right um yeah so this specific configuration uh yeah so if we go over our postgres configuration and we specify the extra hosts parameter um and we map this host docker dot internal um, to actually the host gateway, so we'd get this connection between um, the Docker bridge. This Postgres database would be then exposed into our local instance, and uh, using that local local port forwarding mechanism, using one to seven point zero point zero point one, we will be able to actually then uh, have similar gateways for both our Docker configuration and our local configuration. Um, so I believe that should work. Um, let's pick this up. Uh, actually said it's not working. So extra host, add host name mappings. Um, yeah. So when we actually also boot our Docker containers, we could use the same configuration. Um, that, that should normally work. Um, let's check that our redash instance is working properly. Um, yes, go on. Why are we doing this actually? I mean, specifically to connect um, to the database. Is that why? Yes, to connect to the database from the Python script. Um, We've already, uh, I mean, uh, specific, I mapped the port between our local uh, database port, which is like 5433 to that, uh, I mean, to the containerized Postgres port. So is that, that is, does it like, isn't that enough to connect? Um, in, in our case, it, it is not enough. Um, that's how we do so, it, right? But is it specific to uh, Redash? Um, it's not specific to Redash. It is specific to Docker. Um, 
so I'm not completely sure of the entire IP mappings that are actually happening there, uh, but Hello, hello. Sorry about that. I'm back, right? Yeah, you're back. I thought it was from my side. Oh, it was from my side. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So um, that's that's really not that's not the case. You we our engine creation actually fits on nothing. Um, if you want to add on that, that's for a question. I'm more a follow-up question. Uh, when I try, uh, uh, even if after I, I expose it or I forward the ports, uh, airflow wouldn't connect to the database. The create engine works fine, but in the airflow, when I try to add that connection particularly to use uh, on Postgre operator, it doesn't work. And what um, is the issue behind that? Um, yeah, so this um, extra hosts parameter actually does that. Um, even though um, this specific port mapping um, is allowing us connection uh, between two of the ports that are exposed, right? So we have this, we have our local machine and the Docker instance, um, and they have specific ports that are um, sort of out there, right? So um, the port of our local machines, um, 5433 is, uh, is out there um and the dockers exposed port the 5432 is is out there um but i believe in order in older docker configurations um there was a case where you could simply just do a port forwarding and you'd have access to it um but in most cases um you'd have to specify this internal parameter to have access to to have access to this internal port um, by using your simply local host and uh, or just uh, 127.0.0.1 um, IP. Um, definitely read more into this extra host. I'm not completely, uh, I'm not 100% sure on what it does. So uh, I think definitely go on to read on that. But this is a specific requirement for um, this uh, engine creation. And I believe also on Airflow, um, that might be a requirement when you're creating that connection. Uh, okay, uh, the issue I had first was uh, PG admin connects perfectly. Like when I tried from PG admin, I can access to the Postgre database in the Docker container. But when I try to, uh, well, even the create engine works fine, but specifically the airflow wouldn't work. Like, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, if somebody had faced that issue and fixed it, uh, yeah, that was my question. Um, yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, if PG admin is actually over on the same network of your Docker Compose file, yeah, that, that will work. Um, yeah, but if someone else has faced similar issues, I think I'm in this call. No, I just uh, had a question for Nathaniel. I mean, is that when you try to uh, connect to the, the Postgres database that is shipped with uh, that Docker Compose file you find in the Airflow setup, uh, is that like, is that when you try to connect to that database, is that where you find like that problem? Yeah, uh, so when I try to connect uh, to the database shipped with the actual Docker container, the database inside the container, it doesn't connect from the Airflow side, but PG admin and the create engine works fine. Like the create engine connects and I can access the database, I can write, write and read. And also the PG admin too, I can write and read on that also. But specifically the Airflow wouldn't connect, like the port has, is not running on that host. That, that was the response I got from the Airflow side. Like previously it was working, right? Is that when you try to like, uh, use the containerized uh, uh i mean uh, the containerized postgres database instead of like your host machine is that like where this happened uh, the pg admin and the create engine works fine 
even if the Postgre is on the container, but the Airflow wouldn't connect uh, to the container spawn, to the container database. It actually connects to a remote one. I managed to connect it to a remote one, but uh, uh, I didn't connect, I did not connect to the container spawn. That was my issue. Uh, okay. I actually don't do not get your like problem fully. So like we chat. Um, actually, it's on the uh, engine creation actually fails here as well. Uh, I think let me. Or pretty working instance set up previously. Okay. So let's um, let's see the specific configuration that actually that we might have actually uh, missed on, right? Uh -huh. Okay, so Postgres. And we're trying to connect to PostgreSQL. We have a Postgres database, 5.7. Uh, we have this. We have this creation object that is running. Um, Anything else that we have to change? Um, we set the environment variable. The port was forwarded to the scene. Uh, okay. So I think let's um, let's take down our containers and start them from scratch. Uh, Maybe so that that configuration actually takes place. Yeah, so it is skipping the database initialization step. Um, but all of the port configurations should be the same. Uh, yeah, we're so yeah, so we're mapping the our local hosts, um, yeah, DNS to the same one, so that should work. And this load to DB should now work. Okay, so we're at another, at another. Story. Anything wrong? Engine creation failed. Huh. Okay. Does anyone see any difference from this two? We're having the same mapping over. Dashboard workers for queries. Nothing has changed. Ah, okay. So I think it might be off 
initial issues, but it shouldn't be the case. Uh -huh. Okay, so our Postgres data, it might be the read access that uh, this Postgres data folder actually requires, right? So let's take this down. And uh, if you see the permissions that are specified um, over on the Postgres data, um, it does not have uh, read and write access for every user. So I think we can uh, simply grant that by uh, using this configuration. Um, yeah, so changing is not permitted. Let's change the entire access for it. Um, so we, we now have this, we now have access to actually uh, write to our Postgres database um, from outside, right? Uh, and that should, in theory, give us get us back to where we were. So it's now up. Um, we, our V dash instance is working. Uh, so let's try and create this connection. Still have an error. Okay. Okay, so let's by changing the owner. Uh, okay, uh, in the meantime, can I ask a question? Maybe the community can answer. Yeah, yeah definitely. Go on. Okay, so uh, I didn't inst uh, I didn't set up my whole environment using Docker Compose, and I'm really confused because uh, about Docker Compose, of course, because I see there are uh, at least an a minimum amount of setting uh, configurations to do regarding port uh, settings and other things. So my question is, uh, what actually is the, uh, again, it's not really related to today's session, but I think it's uh, kind of important. What really is the point of using uh, Docker Compose to start a project? Because can't we just do it uh, separately? Can't we just install Airflow, DBT, uh, Postgre and uh, we dash all separately and do our uh, tasks and finally uh, make all these things into a container or in an image. I, I really don't understand what Docker is actually doing in this case. So maybe somebody can explain to me what the difference is in the way you guys are approaching it and, and in the way I just said. If that makes any sense. Definitely. Um, go on and uh, okay. Go on. As I understand, it's like the purpose of like using Docker is just to uh, like uh, generalize our application so that it would work er everywhere, right? So we could. I I think theoretically we can uh, definitely uh, work on different containers uh, separately and create Im an image off of that. I think that, that that could be also uh, one option, but uh, the other like I I lost you on the option uh, would be like to have a, a one single Docker Compose file that I am disconnected. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Now, now you're back. Okay, okay. So uh, I, I think uh, my where I'm trying to like approach this project is to trying to create a single Docker Compose file, which going to contain, uh, consist uh, different containers, right? 
the, the containers would be a container for airflow, a container for um, Redash, and a container for uh, uh, Postgres. And uh, so, like uh, different containers might also need uh, different like uh, containers as a dependency. For example, Airflow needs Postgres as a dependency. So, like we can uh, grant that. I mean, we can specify that on the Docker Compose file, but like I'm getting uh, errors, I mean, uh, bugs in my Docker Compose uh, YAML file, so I haven't been able to like succeed on that, but like that 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 would be like a very good approach, I think. But like, as you say, we could also definitely uh, do, I mean, separate an installation of like an instance of uh, uh, containers of the those images so like we can we can have that on i lost you again but maybe i understand what what you're saying uh, so what what exactly is my question is this what exactly is the difference between doing that in the first place and doing that after you completed your tasks i mean if, if that makes sense, I don't know how to put this. Maybe somebody. I was, I was off actually. I haven't uh, heard you. Yeah, heard what you say. Sorry, like my connection is so unstable. Yeah. So okay. Uh, so my question is, I understand why you why we use Docker Compose and why we do it uh, in the way we do it, but my question is, can't we do that after we completed everything? I mean, for example. Let's assume we installed Airflow, DBT, um, Postgres, and we we, da we dash uh, separately, and we did everything without using any Docker. So can't we containerize everything when we finished our task? That's the main thing that I want to ask. Because I think the whole uh, starting uh, starting using these things by Docker containers will actually uh, needs many configurations so maybe i i i i don't know i'm just asking maybe it, it, it uh, does doing this at last decrease this the complexity of the configurations i don't know if it makes sense actually like this so you you have understood like the basic concept of uh the point of using docker compose right uh, it is because it allows you to easily package everything um, but like as you've seen, like even the tools are being built on, are, like using multi lots of services underneath them. Uh, so just like you'd use Docker to package everything up if you're working in a team and to ship um, your product, uh, you're actually trying to build a bigger product on top of multiple products. Um, and so starting off with those like properly bundled configurations, um, starting off with those properly bundled images uh, will actually really be helpful, right? So it's better to actually do, do that in the first place because the complexity will increase as more and more uh, workflows yeah. and uh, frameworks increase, the complexity also increases. So it's better yeah. to start by actually using docker compose instead of doing that docker compose it uh, in the last place i think yeah yeah definitely that's what oh. yeah, yeah definitely. but we can definitely do that right we cannot we can do everything uh individually and without using any docker thing any any docker and finally we can dockerize everything yeah yeah of course of course you can do that okay. but the complexity um, but will like, increase configuration yeah. will also increase uh, okay yeah thanks that was my that actually uh how are you like the way you communicate with the uh, like different containers uh like doing it separately in the way you communicate while you're in the same uh docker environment um, was that a question on it or... you're just telling him right Okay, so I think I'm this connection is gone. Um, yeah, 
I think I've definitely taken a uh, majority of your time. Uh, yeah, so we have this specific Docker Compose do YAML. I believe I've maybe mistaken some of the default configurations that we've talked about, right? Uh, so the redash, yeah, so over on the redash database URL, um, the configuration that is working is actually when you still set a password. Uh, there is a password configuration, but we're still not passing um, any password here, yet the engine creation is actually working. Uh, but yeah, so if you're facing similar issues that we've actually faced uh, when trying to create that connection between the Postgres database um, and the Python script using the SQL Alchemy, uh, yeah, you can you can look into the specific environment files that we we, we discussed about. Where were where were those? Yeah, so this specific files, right? Uh, so password maybe, uh, this is for the mail password, uh, yeah, but definitely try and set your Postgres password. This is connecting, this is you, this is for the actual Postgres database, uh, but this engine creation is somehow working only when that is set. That is the only difference that I could, um, see from the time that we had. Yeah, so um, yeah, I've already tried to see the data, but we can set a breakpoint and see uh, this specific data. Um, so it, it is the same data that we just downloaded. It is the Netflix data with uh, this columns. Uh, yeah, and so this creates our engine and we're simply just using the to SQL method uh, to actually load the data, to actually load the data frame into, uh, into the Postgres database that we have running, right? So this engine is created and it has now loaded, uh, loaded this into our database. So we have shut down the previous Docker Compose and still again, this Docker Compose file is running on localhost 3500. So if we refresh, we are supposed to get this, but I might not remember the password. Uh, Okay, this might be an issue. I think it was password. Um, yeah, so th this is actually another, the second Docker Compose that I actually opened. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't even at 10 Academy Org, I think. Since I don't have mail configuration set up, I don't think it would actually um, allow me to reset it up. But I think we can, uh, since we know all of the steps, we can, again, I guess, go over it. And it should, again, work. It, uh, let's take down the container so that we are stopping everything that we're using. Let's remove everything that is inside of the Postgres data folder. Uh, uh, and if we go over our history, um, what have we done? We had a specific create DB configuration that we had to run, right? Uh, to initialize our database. Um, yeah, so it is creating that. Uh, yeah, and so that is done. Uh, and if we do a Docker Compose up, but let's specify the file. Um, that should put up our containers that are in this file. Um, and we should be back into the setup screen. We're going back into the login page. Okay. Uh, it has stored here. Everything, if everything is deleted, uh, 
Okay, so maybe it was it is saving them as uh as from containers where it's yeah. uh, okay so this server create db we don't have anything inside of this postgres data folder right see postgres data Move the entire folder. Postgres data. Uh, okay. Let's make sure we don't have any running containers. We don't. Uh, so this command should be the one that is actually populating uh, this this one, right? So over one that we dash tutorial. like it will still ask us to log in um, to contain a database. Yep, it is, it is still thinking that it has a database. Um, when all of the data has actually been mapped, yeah. So I believe we're still going to be asked to be, okay. Yeah, so we are now taken to the setup page, right? Uh, again, let me set up my email. Uh, it's now setting it the password uh, and 10 Academy, right? So we set this up. Um, we already have that container. Um, and so the and so using this uh, load the database section by creating this Postgres engine, um, we've been able to load that data frame into uh, this Netflix data set tree data, right? So let's connect the source. So Redash supports multiple sources, which you can go over and see. Um, we've gone over Amazon Athena, I think on this week. Um, and also there are definitely uh, multiple sources, but since we're going to be connecting to the Postgres database, um, we'll use Postgres itself, right? So let's use Postgres. I think this 1 to 7.0.1, because we've exposed it, um, also works. I think we're on 5433. Uh, where, where was it? 3-n. Yeah, so we have uh, Postgres, and we have a password for password, right? Uh, and the database name that we've used is still Postgres. So we can create a specific connection. Um, and what Redash really allows us to do is also test the connection from here. So yeah, the connection has failed. Um, connection refused is the server running on host 127.0.0.1. Yeah, so again, when we have gone on to actually connect from Redash, the Redash is running inside of Docker, right? So this specific configuration, this specific, um, where was it? The specific DNS mapping that we did uh, between the Docker's internal host and the host get gateway, which allowed us to access um, to access the database from 1 to 7.0.0.1 does not work anymore um, because Redash is um, within the container itself, right? 
So we'd have to connect over the internal network of the host. So this over, over 5433, um, Postgres, this should, this should work. Yeah, okay, so once we test our connection, we see that um, we're successful and we've managed to connect our data source um, on the Redash, from the Redash container to the Postgres database uh, to get the data. So what we can do is we can create a query. Uh, we can simply create a query to either, um, yes, Sandra. So, like, uh, why wouldn't uh, this local host, I mean, 127.0.0.1 didn't work? I mean, the host.docker.internal uh, resolves to, like, give us the host uh, IP address, right? So the host IP address is technically 127.0, which is local host. So, like, shouldn't that, like, work? What if we yeah. just uh, it out with uh, 0. 0. 0. 0. Um, I think if you're using 0. 0.0.0, 0. 0, that would work. That would work and you wouldn't have to do this. But I I, I think I've, I may have complicated things more because um, this 3500 is also um, that redash container that has gone out and been mapped to that local gateway, right? So that port, that, um, where is it? Um, yeah, so this this redash this nginx web server that is giving us this is mapped out at thirty five hundred um, to our local instance, right? Um, and so what we're simply doing here by that is just connecting uh, the server from redash to this Postgres database. Um, and so using zero point zero point zero should probably work. Um, you can look into that but using this same command allows us to create this internal connection uh, within the Docker configuration. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so from that uh, schemas, we have, uh, yeah, so queries is draft. Um, so we have our data source. Let's go back to the quick start page. Um, yeah, and so let's create our first query. Um, is it in data sources or data source groups? Hmm. So I believe, okay, so this is the Postgres database that we have, right? So select this, this, proper query is supposed to get us, uh, have loaded it in here, right? Select all from uh, Netflix data set three. And so this data set three does not exist, line one. Yeah, so we're supposed to get the database here as well. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, could you back? Uh, could you go back to the Python code? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, in the engine uh, URL, since you you changed uh, the local host from one 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 two seven point zero point zero point one to yeah. internal host, would you change that uh, also to connect it to the internal? Um, yeah, in, in that case, okay, yeah, that definitely makes sense. That shouldn't have also been the, the case. So when we used this um, port forwarding, it, it still wasn't working and it couldn't create this connection between that, right? So that was what we were actually testing, but, ah, okay, so ah, I think, Mm. I, I mean, you change mm. you change the host in the in the Python code, not in the three dash. Yeah, yeah. Here, yes. Should we change it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, 
should we change it over on the redash? Uh, no, this host docker dot internet was actually supposed to work. Okay, so I think I might be connecting to the wrong one or post post postgres user postgres. Um, RT from this previously previously you were on port uh, 5433 now you're on port yeah yeah that was the internal configuration yeah so this is supposed to work and we have loaded it into the same database that we have here right so we're loading it on port 433 and this internal port mapping is actually mapping to the database that we, we we're using on our docker container right so this should work and this connection is working over on the redash side but what i'm having difficulty is why it's actually not showing up here over on the public schema uh Access permissions. Ah, so I did. I think I deleted this one after that. Was was that what you were saying? Uh, load to db .py. I might have deleted the connection to actually show a couple of things, and so this data which was actually loaded might have been deleted. Yeah. So we now have this data actually loaded. So yeah, I. I took down the instance after I loaded the data and then I removed the database. And so of course the data wouldn't exist there. Uh, yeah. So we now have this database we have access to, right? And so you, you simply just write um, your queries here. So um, this should get us everything from the table, right? And so you get this tabular data, just like you'd get um, any pandas data frame up up over here. Uh, yeah, and so just to create a simple visualization, um, you'd create this visualization and it has lots of options that you can play with. Since we're dealing with time series data, um, let's, yeah, so, yeah, uh, let's, um, use the column values and the date values to actually visualize the data, right? So let's have the date over on the X column and the closing values over on the Y axis. Um, and so you'd get this chart. So after all, the, the hardest part about this is getting, getting it set up, right? From what we've seen. But after, once it works, it's, everything is just really easy and um, really fun to play around with. So over on the x-axis, we have the date. Um, over on the y-axis, we have the price of uh, Netflix stock in USD. Um, yeah, and you have, you're using the closing value. Um, yeah, you can change the colors uh, and so on. And so like we have this chart that we've created, um, you save it and you can then go on to actually publish it, uh, which I think since we're using, uh, since we're just using it locally, it does not make sense. But if you're working on a group and you want to expose your uh, AWS instance, that would be one way to go around it. So yeah, the main point of it is to create a dashboard at the end. Um, so let's create a dashboard, let's say Netflix analysis. Right. So let's, we have Netflix analysis and you'd add the data as a widget, right? So we have that new query and over that new query, we've seen that we created a table um, and also we've seen that we've created a chart, right? So you can add the table if someone else would just wants the tabular format. Um, I think we can do both. Uh, we can add the dashboard, we can add the table here and you can also add from the new query, you can add the chart um, and you can add it to your dashboard. And yeah, and like that, you'd have you'd have your dashboard set up. Uh, yeah, and so you'd, you'd probably share this, you'd expose this uh, maybe to your team members. There is an option 
um, to create that if you are over on the same network, but since we're using this locally, it really does not make sense. Um, yeah, okay. So that a question. Yeah, yes, I mean. Is it uh, real time? I mean, the data being pulled uh, from the database? Like, yeah. does it? Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. There is an option to set um, on what it refreshes. I believe it's this, yeah. So it, it, it could synchronize the changes uh, from your database. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yes, nothing. Uh, is there any easier way to host uh, the Redash dashboard? It looks so um, complex to host it. Uh, it is. It is. It's. It, it almost feels like. Um, yeah, they want you to pay for the actual version. Yeah, Redash is completely open source, but um, there is. Uh, they actually manage. They allow you to pay for a service, and they set up the entire process. But it's a paid service. Um, but they, I think the easiest process is um, the one we've just gone to. Um, sadly, um, yeah, but, and I can share this Docker Compose file and this v-m file. Um, I wasn't completely sure on what the environment files are supposed to do and uh, what the difference was between the initial setup that we had. But yeah, I think this this is pretty much it. And so, but once you have that connection set up, it's, yeah, it's really easy. Could, could, uh, could you share uh, with us the YAML and uh, the .m file so that we will not struggle to change um, all of that? Or we have okay, to yeah, do it think... without... <laughs> um, Yeah, it would have been good if everyone followed along, but yeah, even on the okay. following along, what I did I... did not work. So I think I'll share the YAML file and the .m. Uh, yeah. OK, thank you. <laughs> no problem. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I think I've shared the official YouTube page for Redash. Um, yeah, they have pretty good videos uh, to go over the configuration. Um, but yeah, um, this is this is the basics of Redash. Um, okay, I think uh, OSS. I might not be able to do that. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but I'll definitely share uh, two of the files um, on Slack. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, happy Friday, everyone. Um, look for. I look forward to see the visualizations that you do in your setup. Yeah, thank you for being here. Yeah, I'll I'll do that.